I'm in Auburn Hills, Michigan, and this here is a new Jeep Grand Cherokee. Headed to India soon. It's more luxurious on the inside, more comfortable, better equipped, and Jeep say they're going to bring it at an attractive price. Is it good enough to take on its luxury SUV rivals? Does it have what it takes? Well, this here is your first exclusive drive. Now in its fifth generation, the new Grand Cherokee has grown and moved forward in several directions. So what do we have here? Well, first up, the designers have given it more width. This bonnet is wider, larger, more fleshed out. And then the grill here, the seven slot grill, is more vertical, more stand up. Gives it more of an SUV feel. The headlights are slim and beautifully designed. The turn indicators are on top. And of course, along the side you get Jeep's squared wheel arches. That's the signature. We won't get this in India. This is the E plug-in hybrid. But we will get this new Grand Cherokee badge with the American flag here. Towards the rear, you see a bit more space over here. And this floating pillar and this line looks pretty attractive. Again, towards the rear, slim tail lights, very nicely done. They connect here, no LED, but this band of black connects them. And overall, a much more sophisticated and upmarket look. Often referred to as the most awarded SUV in history, the new Grand Cherokee is built on a chassis that is considerably stiffer than the earlier one. It is also specifically tailored to take a hammering on the toughest and the most pothole-ridden roads in the world. To keep the weight down, the bonnet and hatch are made in aluminium. And to increase stiffness, there's a new strut brace that improves rigidity up to 125%. The biggest upgrade, however, is on the inside. The new Grand Cherokee, Jeep says, is now fully kitted out as a luxury car. Now, on the inside, it's clearly more upmarket. The minute you get in, you get that feeling of being in a luxury car rather than one that's hardy and hard-wearing, which was the earlier generation one. Now, where you can really tell the difference is in the details, the manner in which things have been finished, the materials used, and how well everything has been put together. Stuff like this leather-covered dash with the double stitching. Really need top quality luxury car stuff. This band of chrome that Jeep calls its wings, it goes across the dash and comes up, you may remember it, from the compass. Looks stunning here, beautifully blended. This texture here, it, it can be wood, it can be piano black. And this new steering wheel is particularly good. Nicely finished again in leather with inserts, metallic inserts and others. It feels really good. Now some of the buttons, yes, you can tell they are carried over. But in general, the fit, finish and quality is just top class. Now, one unique feature that's a first in class for this vehicle is this. Now, there's not much to look at. It looks like a plain dash, but switch it on and a passenger screen comes on. The good bit is that me, the driver, while I'm driving, I can't see anything on it. But the passenger can watch some media, watch a movie, control various things and really use it while we are on the road. The screen has a privacy filter and this makes it invisible to the driver on the move. But this isn't the only interesting screen around. On the center console, you get this waterfall-like effect with the screen stuck on it. I think it works superbly. This row of buttons on top has these nice chrome dividers in between. They work pretty well. The touchscreen is lag-free. The Apple CarPlay slots in well. It isn't the biggest screen, but it's functional, it's quick, and that's exactly what you want. Apple CarPlay and Maps work particularly well, and there's no lag at all. The reversing camera is sharp and comes with a water jet equipped function. Further down, something I really like, 
these buttons here for the aircon control. You get a blower control, temperature control, stuff you can drive, feel with your finger, adjust and don't have to worry about. Further down, lots of piano black and plenty of chrome here. This gear selector is beautifully finished. It's got a knurled finish. Of course, this is a Jeep, so you get rock, mud, snow, auto and sport. The car in India will get a select terrain system with auto, sport, snow, mud and sand. Only the trail rated version gets the rock setting and that isn't coming to India yet. As we move further down, these cup holders are nicely rubberized. They have this neat chrome lining and that along with this piano black looks pretty neat. A fair sized elbow box, it's pretty deep and what I particularly like is this neat little detail. These are Jeep's seven slats, the ones on the grill. Nicely detailed here, it's pretty cool. And there's another cool Easter egg, which we'll look at a bit later. While quality design and finish are clearly into luxury SUV territory, some of Jeep's European rivals do hold an advantage, especially in some areas. The gap, however, isn't particularly large. And what its rivals lack is the Jeep's robust build. That said, some of the plastics lower down on the dash are a bit ordinary and the fit and finish inside the elbow box and on the cubby hole in the center console aren't great either. This brings us to the rear seat. Now the cabin feels a little wider on the inside. There's a lot more light coming in from these big windows. They're more vertical now and quality levels are pretty good. You can also close this blind here and should you want more light in the cabin, there's a massive panoramic sunroof above you can slide it open and flood the cabin with light. Rear seat is pretty comfortable, back support is good. Thigh support could have been better, but it feels nice and airy because you have a lot of legroom this time around. What it also has is a lot more space in the back. Come take a look. It's wider. There's more space to keep stuff. This here is your subwoofer and importantly you get also extremely neat and cool are these little Easter eggs that tell you of the heritage of the Cherokee and the Grand Cherokee. Time to get Jeep's SUV on the road. Whereas the SUV you see on these pages is a plug-in hybrid, we in India will only get the 270 horsepower 2 litre petrol with no electric boost. Interestingly, the 2 litre engine uses direct petrol injection and a twin scroll turbocharger. Now, while we won't get this hybrid system in India, the e-save mode helps decouple the electric system from the petrol. And here, what I'm getting when I put my foot on the throttle is only boost from the turbo and the engine. With its big turbo, the engine has a bit of a delay or lag. Now put your foot on the throttle at a low speed. And yes, you can feel a hint of turbo lag. But responses after that are pretty strong. And the Grand Cherokee's engine has a nice mid-range. There's a good amount of responsiveness and performance there. And keep the engine running in that band and you can move along pretty smartly. It isn't the most refined engine there is, especially in the mid-range, when it gets a bit throaty. And the top end is a bit noisy too. Performance, however, is clearly there. But what it does give you at the top with the turbo blowing nicely is some smart performance and owners should enjoy that quite a bit. Still, a six-cylinder, something many of its rivals get, would certainly have made a world of a difference. And this is especially in the area of effortless performance, smoothness and acoustic refinement. 
engine apart, refinement in general is pretty good. Now when it comes to refinement, this new Grand Cherokee is a bit nicer than the earlier one. Now this particular car has some off-road tires that have big lugs and are quite noisy, especially on a surface like this. But in general, acoustic dampening is excellent. It's really quiet in the cabin. And you can even hear yourself when you whisper. And that's pretty important for a luxury car. It rides flat as well. Now on its tall suspension, the Grand Cherokee takes big dips and small ones in its stride. This air suspension manages the bumps pretty well and the ride is flat, especially once you get it up to speed. We won't be getting the air springs in India and that may not be such a bad thing because steel springs help improve ride quality. They make it more supple, especially at low speed and over sharper bumps like the ones we have back home. Now the Grand Cherokee feels larger from behind the wheel. It doesn't feel as compact or as agile as earlier. And it may not be just as much fun to drive over some twisty stuff. But this is a big SUV after all. And what's nice is that the steering is pretty accurate. The car follows the road decently. And at high speed, there is a good amount of stability. Now on some of the corners, especially tight ones like this, the Grand Cherokee needs a bit of help and encouragement. And it isn't the most agile SUV around. But that's okay, this is a big heavy luxury SUV and agility around tight corners doesn't necessarily have to be its forte. That said, there's an aloofness to the whole driving experience and driver involvement and connect aren't very good. Jeep's Grand Cherokee is not your regular luxury SUV. It may look feel and even drive like one, but underneath it all is an SUV with the heart of an off-roader. And that makes it different. The luxury SUV to go for if you want to explore trails in and around your country house, take long drives into the hinterland, or explore desolate and remote parts of our diverse and fabulous country, Jeep's Grand Cherokee has always been a great combination of serious off-roader and practical tough SUV. Where this new one takes the game ahead, is in the area of fit, finish, material quality and features. Yes, it's a proper luxury car now. Sure, other luxury SUVs have a bit of an edge in certain areas and at an expected price of rupees 70 to 80 lakh, the new Grand Cherokee is unlikely to have a significant price advantage. Still, what you get for your money is a luxury SUV with the heart of an off-roader and that should appeal to many.